Hey guys, Resident Loser Jeremy here. Today I want to talk about a few things that you can do when preparing to go into the studio as an artist, as a band, if you're just going to the studio. These are some things that I've seen that maybe not everybody thinks about or we know them inherently, but we just don't do them. And as you're preparing for the studio, just putting these into practice in the smallest form can make the biggest difference for you, for the people you're working with, for any musicians involved, just to make your band happier, whether that's actual band or players that you're working with to make your engineer happier, to make your producer happier, and overall to make you happier, to allow you to sit back and be the artist that you are. So if that interests you, hang on for just a little bit. We're gonna talk about some things to make your studio visit as good as it possibly can be. Here we go. Okay, first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you get some good rest the day or even a few days before you go into the studio. If you're tired, you're not gonna be thinking your best. And yeah, sure, maybe some of the records you listen to, those guys stayed up all night with weird stories about partying and drinking, going into the studio hungover and making these legendary records. And though that may be true, can you do it? Probably not, so get some sleep. You want to be sure to get a good breakfast in. It's gonna be a long day, and you don't want to be hangry for the whole thing. Mm. Good coffee helps. Beyond time, nobody likes a band who's late. And honestly, this is the silliest one of all, is if I'm sitting here, or whoever your engineer or producer is, waiting on you to come through that door, it's not us who are gonna pay the price, it's you. You're literally taking money from yourself if you had just gotten out of bed maybe 20 minutes earlier, went ahead and loaded your instruments the night before, it's these little things. Be on time. It'll make so much of a difference. Now this one may seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do this part of it. Know your songs. And there's a little bit more here. Like if you're, if you're coming in and you're writing your songs in the studio, that's probably not the best use of your money. Honestly, you're gonna take a lot of time and you're not gonna get results that you really like. But there's something else to be said about this if you practice too much for the studio and you really get married to certain ideas you're not going to be as flexible in the studio as you really want to be and maybe you hired a really good engineer or a really good producer who has some good ideas you're going to want to be open-minded to those so yes know your songs but be open-minded enough to take suggestions that might make those songs so much better in the end because after all you are hiring a professional so here you go Click track is for some reason a point of contention with a lot of different artists. If you decide to use one because of your material and what's gonna happen to your material after the fact, maybe it's getting synced to a bunch of loops, maybe some other electronic things are gonna be happening, you wanna make sure that's on the grid pretty well. Now, you can record to a click in a human way. You don't automatically have to sound like a robot. And if you're recording to a click and all of a sudden your vibe and your soul is gone, you're not doing it right. The only way you're gonna get better at it is if you practice. And if you get comfortable grooving with a click just like you groove with a good drummer. I don't think one takes away from the other and a good player can do well playing to a click or not to a click. But in some ways a click track can save you money. There's a lot more that a competent engineer can do with a session that is on a click track than not. For example, they can take the best parts of a song that maybe don't differ between sections and fly it around. Now, will that make a more robotic thing? Uh, that's probably a, a talk for another day, but that said, there's a whole lot that a competent engineer can do with a track that was recorded to a click and do it very, very fast and get a very good product if your end result is something along the lines of radio or modern day pop music. Take that with a grain of salt. 
Woo. If you are headed to the studio as a band, you're gonna wanna bring some backups. Those things that are consumables from all of us. You're gonna want extra drumsticks. You're gonna want extra strings. You're gonna probably want an extra guitar, maybe just in case. If you're, especially if you're doing like hard left, hard right pan stuff, sometimes that's cool with a different guitar. Bring extra tubes if you have a tube head. A lot of times these are things studios will have for you, but if you're one of those picky people who likes just his certain type of string, his or her certain type of drumstick, you're gonna wanna take extra of those. That's not the studio's responsibility to have that for you. They may have it, but that's really on you to take care of. Now speaking of strings and everything, you're gonna wanna make sure your instruments like this guitar are in really good working order. You don't wanna get to session day and notice that your pot is broken. If you can, fix it yourself. If you can't, take it to a shop. It's not that expensive. And while you're here, why don't you make sure you got a fresh set of strings? I like NYXLs. If you like something else, put something else on. In any given case, almost every time, I would rather have a fresh set of strings on. Now, I don't care the brand if I'm not playing them. I would rather the guitar player have a fresh set of strings that, that I necessarily wouldn't have picked rather than use really, really old strings on their guitar for the session. Because those strings are going to sound dead. Those strings are going to not tune up the right way. It's going to be a bad time. But if you have fresh strings of really any kind, as long as you're not paying like two or three dollars for the set, you're going to be good. So while you're restringing, give the guitar a good clean. Make sure everything's in working order. And if it's not, then you still have some tweaks. Take it to the studio. If there's little things that need to be fixed and you know what they are and you ask your studio person to help you with that, chances are they probably know a quick fix for it. But at least you took the time to figure out what that was and what needs to happen before tracking. Trust me, your engineer's going to love you for that. And to go along with guitar players changing their strings and bass players changing their strings and keeping their instruments in order, drummers, you're not off the hook. If your drum heads look more like this, with a bunch of tape everywhere, rather than this, that sounded awful. Ugh. Anyway, change your drum heads. Any number of drum heads are gonna be better than an old dead head that is nasty and covered in tape. Unless you just want a sound that sounds like, like you're hitting tape. I don't know why you would, but. Talk to your engineer and your producer about the drum sounds that you want to achieve because if you're coming into the studio with a drum set that is covered in heads that are completely dead, covered in tape, there's no resonance to be found anywhere, they haven't been tuned in years, they may or may not tune up, and you want to record anything that's not like a lo-fi funk record, you might be in trouble. Because if you come in with bad heads and you're giving them references like, I don't know, I'm going to catch a lot of crap for this one, but like something like Nickelback or I don't know, what is a, a drum record? I have record with huge drum tones. If you're like a metal band and you want to sound like periphery or something, which I love periphery. I love it. But all that said, if you want those huge drum sounds like the records that you love and you're bringing in a drum set that hasn't been maintained, you're not going to get it. There's no magic button. There's really not a magic button to make a bad drum set sound like a good drum set. Now, can you lay samples over it? Sure. But if you were going to do that, why didn't you just program your entire record in the first place? You're negating everything about the studio that you just and the cool sounding room that you're in. Samples can augment a kit, they can replace a kit, but again, if you're coming to a studio, don't rely on just that to fix the problems with your equipment. Drums are one of the most fun things to get right, and what it seems like one of the things that drummers seem to know the least about doing. Now, I'm no pro, but I love tuning a drum set and just trying things, so go buy some heads. Figure out what those records are that you absolutely love. Figure out what heads they're using. I'm sure you can find it. Figure out how they're tuning their drums and you'll be shocked at what you can do with even the cheapest drum sets. Our house kit here is a Ludwig Classic Maple. That's no cheap drum set but I've recorded some really really low-end PDP sets and when you have even a couple hours and some fresh heads and a good reference track of what you want the drums to sound like those drums can sound awesome. There's really very few cheap low-end drum kits that you can't get to sound at least moderately decent. So do some homework there. Drums are huge. What what sells records? Kick drums and snares. So go for it. <laughs> of course, on the flip side of all this, nobody cares what your snare sounds like on your hit record. Whatever. It seems like, I hope this isn't just me, but what can break me out of something, I can forgive tones just about all the way around. But if a record has really bad sounding drums, like drums with mechanical issues like you can hear squeaky pedals or cymbals that are just like oh my god when things are distracting about the drum set and the drums aren't right that can ruin a record and derail the process faster than just about everything can so 
So get your drums right. Yeah, it might sting a little to go buy new heads for everything, but should you be taking 12 toms into the studio anyway? Do you need all of them? Honestly, are you Neil Pert? No, you just two, two of them, two of them. I'm just kidding. Take as many toms as you want, but realize you're gonna have to maintain all of that too. There you go. One thing you wanna keep in mind once you do get to the studio, if you're bringing your own band or you have session players there, or even if it's just you working with the engineer, everyone there is a team. Everyone there wants you to succeed. Don't go back and forth and bicker about little things. Chances are if you're in the studio and you hear an idea you don't like, don't go and snap somebody's head off. Chances are you're running on a digital system and the undo button is just a click away. So you can go back and forth and try ideas very, very quickly. There's a lot of times in the studio where maybe you think you're not gonna like something, you end up trying it and that was really a very good idea. So keep an open mind in this process. Everyone's a team. You're all working together to do something really, really cool. So don't hop on each other's backs. Don't get into little fights and bicker with each other. Realize that you're in the studio to do something you love to create art and that you wanna to work together to make a project that's bigger than everybody, really. And one of the last things you want to do, and if you do nothing else, this is the one thing you need to pay attention to. As soon as you step foot inside a studio, wherever that studio is, whoever you're working with, leave your ego right there at the door. Don't bring it into the studio with you. Your ego is the one thing that will really hurt you inside of a studio situation. You don't know everything. If you did, you'd be recording your own record, but that's okay. You don't need to know everything. You're the artist. You know your songs. You've come to a place where an engineer or a producer can take that to a next level. Now, are all their ideas gonna be awesome? Probably not. But if you go in with such a big ego and inflated that you're bulldozing over every idea that anybody's gonna give you, you're not gonna get a good result, ever. It's not gonna happen. But if you go in humble and open-minded, confident in what you have, confident in your abilities, knowing you're a good musician, that's gonna be a good time. Nothing's more confusing when there's eight people making decisions about something that's way too easy. Designate one person if you're dealing with multiple people. If you're in a band with multiple players, pick one person. This is not one person's more important than the other type of thing. You just want one person that can talk to the engineer, talk to the producer, one point of contact for that person. Nothing is more confusing as an engineer when everyone is sending different mix notes or different song ideas. It is really frustrating as an engineer or a producer to hear things from multiple angles. And a lot of times those different angles aren't even talking to each other. So the singer doesn't know what the drummer wants. The drummer doesn't know what the bass player wants. The bass player has no idea what's going on. Sorry bass players. I'm a bass player. I can say that. The point being, if you designate one person to talk to the engineer and the producer, that does a few things for the producer. One, you guys are going to be talking to each other so you can make cohesive decisions about the entire project. And the other thing that does is it makes things way less confusing for the engineer so now he doesn't have to text six, seven, eight people every time he's doing a bounce. Now, above all these other things, they're all important, yes. The main thing, have fun. You don't get to go into a studio all the time. If you don't own a space like this, chances are this isn't your everyday life, and that's all right. But if you're going in stressed out, worried about everything, worried about money, worried about not getting enough sleep, worried about not knowing your parts, concerned that you don't know how to play to a click, worried that somebody's ego is gonna get in the way or wondering who's gonna make the decisions, you're not gonna have fun in the studio. And you're all together, you're all making music. It should be fun. This is music. <laughs> the simple fact that you get to go to a studio and do what you love and you have a chance to make this art with your closest friends or pals or awesome studio musicians, you have a really good opportunity in front of you. And if you're thinking too hard about any small details, you're gonna miss it. The thing I always tell people when they come into the studio, I can fix pitch, I can fix timing. Ideally, I don't wanna fix either of those things, but I can. But what I really can't fix is passion and I can't fix a performance. So all these are things to do before you set foot into the studio. You wanna make sure you get some sleep. You wanna make sure you've had a good meal. You wanna make sure you know your songs, that you're comfortable with a click, that your ego's not gonna get in the way. And all these things are just so you can get into the studio, you can 
relax and you can just do your thing. Because that's all that the studio is there for, to capture you, to capture your ideas, to capture your vision for what your music is. And when you get into a space like this and you're distracted with all these other thoughts, you're not gonna have the best possible experience. Doing these things can hopefully save you some money. They can save you some time, because in the studio, those two things are pretty closely related and it's gonna make you have a better time. That's what it's all about. So if you're going into the studio and it's your first time, don't worry, you're gonna have fun. If you've been there a hundred times, why are you even watching this video? I swear. Ultimately, the studio shouldn't be a scary space, despite how close I'm sitting to the camera right now. <laughs> you should have fun in the process. And if you're not, maybe you need to reevaluate where you're going. Stuff in my beard. Ugh. Anyway, short and sweet for our other videos. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time we make a video. Check out our other ones. We've got some fun ones coming up, so you may as well go hit the bell. I mean, you may as well. There's more coming. You guys take it easy. We'll see you next time.